I'm Ben Curry from Electrical Innovations. We're electrical contractors and solar installers based in Derby. And this system walkthrough, we're going to talk about the solar panels on the roof, the batteries, the inverters, and everything that went into this project. So keep on watching and we'll walk you through the system. So as you can see, this one is a nice install on a bungalow. We do like the bungalows. It makes it a much easier install, but not all the properties are like that. Uh, we've got 18 panels here. These are 400 watt panels and also, we fitted optimizers to this system. The reason being, there's quite a bit of shading on, from next door's property, which we're gonna see in the mornings and potentially in the evenings in winter. Um, but for the most of the middle of the day, the sun's gonna be above the height of the next door's property. But we did fit optimizers on this system to manage the amount of shading that we're gonna be get and also to keep that power output up as best as possible. Optimizers are perfect for that what would normally happen would be a bunch of panels in the array would get shading and that would bring down the whole array or at least the whole string of panels to match what the worst performing panels are doing. And an optimizer is going to separate that out so that each individual panel will produce the maximum amount possible for that panel at that time, bringing the overall power output of the array up. In addition, on this job, as you can see in the background, we fitted bird mesh protection. It's quite discreet on this. You can't really see it's there, but um, if you look closely, you can see there's a mesh protection system around this one. It's going to stop any birds or pests getting under the array. It's going to keep it all nice and tidy. So that's the panels on this one, all black, JA Solar 400 watt panels, and there's 18 of them. So it's quite a large system. So this system is over seven kilowatts on the roof and the power output is 6,500 kilowatt hours per year being expected to be produced from the roof, which is just a fantastic amount. It's gonna cover the vast majority of the customer's energy usage all year round, um, between battery charging at night in the winter to top up the energy for the usage, um, and then in the summer, they're gonna have a massive amount of export which they're gonna get paid for, which is gonna cover some of that standing charge as well. So the bills are gonna be astronomically lower than what they were before the solar was fitted. And having a really large roof like this, it's fantastic to be able to utilize it and get that solar panel system up there. This one was a really nice install. It's quite discreet on the side of the property. So although you can see it from the road, it looks like a really nice, well-fitted system. Um, almost perfectly fits on the roof for the size as well so it's a good looking one it's definitely something that i'd have on my house 18 panels like this it's uh, making me jealous because i've only got 12 at home so nice big system so as you can see all the equipment in this one is inside the house it's kind of in, in a utility room the customer is actually calling it the plant room which is quite funny because sometimes it can be a bit commercial but it's nice to have this tucked away inside easily to access um, and all in one spot so in terms of using the equipment, while you don't need to use it on a day-to-day -day basis, it is nice to have it all laid out this and, and be able to come and access it when you need to. So one of the common questions we get for solar systems such as this one is where does the equipment go? So this and the layout as it is now would be my number one best place to have the system, but it, it's not every home that's got the space for it. Luckily, this one has, has got this area in the house where they can use it and the boilers in this room you know and it, it's nicely all contained in this one place these inverters and batteries they can go in the lofts they can go inside outside um, but it's definitely in the house like this where they're happiest or in the garage or something where it's accessible easy to maintain and easy to install and have it all neat on the wall like this it's just um, a much better place for the system to go. So in terms of system size on this job, this here is a six kilowatt Solis inverter. This is the brains of the system. This inverter here, and you can see from the screen, it's going to control the solar panels on the roof, which are wired via this wiring here. These isolators can turn them off. It's also going to control the batteries and it's going to decide when the energy needs to go to the battery and when it needs to be taken out of the battery and put into the house. The inverter is going to do the monitoring of this and it's going to tell you on your smartphone app exactly what's going on with the system. And you can also see this on here as well on the screen. And the inverter is also going to show you the historical data of the system over time. So you're going to see what you're generating on each day. 
where that energy is going, whether it's gone to the house or whether it's gone back to grid or whether it's been stored in the batteries. And it's going to make the decisions for the system on whether to use or store the energy or export it. So the Solis inverter on this job is, is really the brains of the, the system and it's got a lot of work to do. When the inverter is a nice large one like this six kilowatt one, it means you can provide up to six kilowatts of energy into the house at once. And that's going to be from the solar and the batteries together. So if a day like today, when it's really grey outside, you might produce two or three kilowatts on the roof. In fact, I think now they've, put, they've actually producing 0.75 kilowatts at this exact time. That's going to be topped up from the batteries to up to six kilowatts. It also means at night, when the batteries are running the house on their own and the solar is completely off, you can put the maximum discharge rate of the batteries through this inverter. So they're going to be discharging at five kilowatts. And the reverse is the same. If you've got a, a short, cheap energy window in the evening where you can charge the batteries up from the grid, then that five kilowatt inverter means you've got more energy going into the batteries um, in that set period of time. So things to think about on the inverters is the, the maximum AC current that's going to come out of it, the maximum DC current that can go into it, and the charge and discharge rates of the batteries in terms of the battery itself and the amount of charge and discharge from the batteries the inverter can handle. So this one, fantastic piece of kit, is why we, the vast majority of our jobs is a Solis hybrid inverter and I'd say a lot of the jobs we fit are these five or six kilowatt solace inverters. So the inverter connects to the internet. We've already mentioned that there is a smartphone app involved. This is the wireless dongle. It's a Wi-Fi connection on this. These can come with wired ones. So if we're struggling with wireless in the area, you can get a wired one as well. But this is going to connect the inverter to the internet. You're going to get a web portal and um, the, the smartphone portal to be able to check the system. And it's key for these because not only does it give you the data, it also monitors the alarms and alerts on the system as well. So if you've got an issue on the system or a network problem in the area, the inverter is going to alert you and you get that alarm through straight away with it being connected to the internet. So these batteries are the Pure Drive 5 kilowatt hour DC storage unit. There's two of them on this job. So we do have 10 kilowatt hours. Now, we, these are the batteries that we fit the most. We've, we've fitted hundreds of these. Um, and the reasons I like them, it, more than anything, is just like, look how they look in the property. For a domestic installation, especially if it's in the house rather than in the garage, they look like an appliance. They, they're quite slim to the wall. They're quite sleek looking. And it is something that you could reasonably have in your house and it wouldn't look out of place. It looks like a boiler or a, another item, you know, a white goods item that you might have in the home. So we really like these. Um, they've got a nice indicator on the front. The, the green flashing light means that the, the batteries are at a different state of charge. So they're charging or discharging at the moment. Um, they'll go solid green when they're full. Um, you can have up to five of these on one inverter. So this system here could have 25 kilowatt hours. Again, when it comes to batteries, you really need to be matching the battery usage to your home. So if you're using 30 kilowatt hours in the home in a day, then a 10 kilowatt hour battery system, while it will help, it's not gonna keep up with your energy demands. And it's the same the other way. If you're only using five kilowatt hours a day in the home and you have a 20 kilowatt hour battery, then you've got a lot of battery that's never gonna get filled up or emptied. So we try and match the energy usage to the customer's home usage. A good rule of thumb for this is about one to 1.2 ratio versus the home's whole day usage. If your battery can cover your whole day and then some, it means that not only are you gonna be able to capture all the available sun and put it into the battery, you're gonna then empty it fully and maybe you still charge it at night in the winter as well. And, and having a battery that's big enough to do that means that on one day when you get a load of sun, you can fill the batteries up more. The next day, if you've got a slightly higher energy usage, you've got that buffer. Whereas if you've got a smaller battery and you're relying on charging it in the day, then discharging it, then charging it back up at night and discharging it, you could sometimes struggle with the the amount of energy you're using in the day from the grid being too high to warrant being on the nighttime tariff. So I'll just say that again, just to make that one clear. 
nighttime tariffs where it's cheap to charge the battery are going to cost you more in the day. So you've just got to balance that. Choose your tariff, choose your battery size, choose your solar panel size, and match that to your home energy usage. And all these parts of the system, while it does look like it just goes on and they're all the same, they've all been selected to suit the customer's home usage. So in particular with this one, customers are using between eight and 12 kilowatt hours a day on average in this property. So we've got a solar PV system that will far exceed that. It means they've got plenty of export in the summer and the winter rate of that is quite high, which is great. And we've got the battery that's doing the best it can to match the daily usage. Okay, so let's move on to the rest of the kit that we've put in. So one thing that's really important for us on all of our installs is containment. So to have your trunking on the wall, having all the cabling contained and concealed. I mean, some bits, you know, when you've got a cable going into the inverter, you, you can't avoid having some on show, but all the wiring that comes to the batteries, all the wiring that goes to these isolators and meters, it's all contained in this trunking. If this was in a house and there was just wiring everywhere, it's gonna look dreadful. You just wouldn't want to see it. So we keep that all nice and neat. In the consumer unit, we put a new consumer unit in on all of our jobs. The reason for that is we're going to be fitting surge protection to the new circuits we install. We also need a place to house the energy meter. And in this one, it's an Accrell energy meter that came with the inverter. We've got circuits then for the solar inverter, the meter and the surge protection. And we've also got plenty of spare capacity in case the customers want to come along later and add extra circuits. And the most common ones for these would be water heater controllers, and EV chargers. These are the really common ones we see. So we leave space in the consumer unit just for that. Alongside the consumer unit, we've got the isolators to the system. AC isolator is going to turn all the power off. These are the two DC isolators which disconnect the panels on the roof. And then we've got an export meter as well. This just clocks the, the meter in of what's been used in the home from solar since they've had the install done. So that's another system in the bag. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got this far, it probably means you're really interested in solar. So feel free to get in touch with us. We can help with your system. We're Electrical Innovations based in Derby. You can call the office on 01332 498 130. We also have a website which has got loads of information on it about solar. We've got loads of videos on our channel as well. If you keep looking wherever you've seen this, be it social media or YouTube, you'll be able to check out the rest of our content on there. Um, if you want to check us out on the web, it's elect-in.co.uk forward slash solar. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next video.